When you build a disaster recovery plan, your key questions are how fast should you be able to recover your infrastructure in the event of a disaster, and how much data can you afford to lose during the downtime? These questions are the essence of the recovery time and recovery point objective metrics. In this video, we overview these concepts and their practical meaning for your backup and disaster recovery planning strategy. RTO stands for Recovery Time Objective. This metric shows how fast you need to recover the given piece of infrastructure, or all of it. In other words, it's the maximum tolerable time your service can be offline. Recovery Point Objective, or RPO for short, is a metric that indicates the maximum amount of data that you can afford to lose during the downtime. There are several steps in defining and implementing the recovery time and recovery point objectives within your company. First of all, you need to define the costs of both data loss and downtime. RTO and RPO are not based on the pure will of the decision makers. They need to be based on costs. Why? Because the stricter the objectives are, the more expensive the means of backup and recovery are. And in some cases, you don't need to be able to recover fast and expensively. For example, if your archive data server is down, there's no need to recover it in under an hour. Then, define the maximum tolerable downtime or amount of data loss. And don't forget that you should define the objectives for different parts of your infrastructure differently. In contrast to the previous example of an archive data server whose downtime is not critical, we might have a production e-commerce database. And one hour's downtime of such a database or a week of lost data could cost your company tens of thousands of dollars. Define the objectives. Once you know the maximum tolerable cost for your business, you can develop the desired time frames. Define the means of backup and recovery. For example, if the recovery point objective is equal to one hour of loss, you should back up your data at least once an hour. If the recovery time objective is equal to one hour, then you need to be able to recover the service or the piece of infrastructure within one hour or less. These considerations will give you a basis for choosing the exact means of backup and recovery you should implement in order to achieve your target metrics. There are two best practices that you should consider when developing your recovery time and recovery point objectives. RTO and RPO do not work separately. If you recover the server but lose all the data, your recovery objective is not met. The same applies to the infrastructure. If you have a fully functional backup copy at your disposal, but all your infrastructure is gone, your data is useless. This means that recovery time and recovery point objectives are interconnected, as are the means of backup and recovery you will be using. Test your plans. In an ideal world, you know instantly about the downtime and you start the recovery immediately. In the real world, though, it takes time to notice the issue after which you need to assess the damage and define what exactly needs to be recovered. And only after that can you start the recovery process. And all that greatly affects your recovery time and recovery point objective estimations. So once you define your disaster recovery plan, test it to find out if you really hit the target. So let's summarize. The recovery time and recovery point objectives state the maximum tolerable downtime before your services are recovered and the maximum tolerable data loss, respectively. These metrics are built on the basis of the costs of downtime and data loss. You should keep in mind that different pieces of infrastructure and different data sets will have different RTO and RPO. These objectives are essential in order to build a solid backup and disaster recovery plan and choose the exact means and solutions for backup and recovery planning. If you want to learn more about best practices in backup, disaster recovery, and storage management, check out our blog in the description below.